Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. Well, today is a little bit of a different day. Well, first of all, I'm wearing glasses and I usually only wear glasses when I have to see stuff close up here. Um, it's kind of funny using wearing glasses when I'm doing a video because everything's blurry in the distance. So today I'm going to talk about using the dock and using the, or programming, the Sigma 150 to 600 lens. Now, first things first, this is a Canon dock because this is the Canon Sigma 150 to 600. If you're going to use a dock, make sure it's for the lens that you have. Don't try to put a Nikon dock on a Canon lens or vice versa or a Sony or whatever. You need the dock for the lens you have. Second thing is not all Sigma lenses will take a dock. Now you can get on there, but they will not take the programming back and forth. It has to be a lens that actually will accept the dock and will actually accept the software that it uses to rewrite the information. So make sure those things before you do anything. Now I've already taken the little cover out of here. Um, it's just like a camera lens cover. My camera's sitting over there. Everything's ready to go. I'm going to put the dock on the lens and when I do that, you find the red dot on the dock, you find the red dot on the lens, you line them up, and obviously I didn't do that very well, and then you lock it in place. Once it's lined up, then you plug in your USB cord into your computer. Once you've done that, then what you do is you go in and you open up your Sigma Optimization Pro. Now, I've already done this once today to make sure that the software is up to date. I always hate these videos because I hate videos where there's software and you go through and you turn on your software and it looks different. Well, as of March the 4th of 2022, the software that's on here, the firmware on my lens, everything I know is up to date. So what you're seeing is the most up-to-date of everything. I've actually gone through, I've reset my lens back to factory specs, I've checked the firmware, I've checked the software, I've done everything just so that you're seeing the most up-to-date of everything here. So once it comes up, it's gonna show the lens over here. Now, I also went through and got rid of all the lenses that are in here so you can just see the one lens, and that's this lens right here for this lens, which is the 150 to 600. If you don't trust that the firmware is up to date, you can hit the firmware update button and it'll go through and check once more for you. You can hit it a hundred times if you want to. <laughs> once it says that it's up to date, it's up to date. When you want to customize, you hit the customization button. The customization that you can do is set here that is according to the lens and the camera manufacturer. Different functions and features are on this lens which will not be on other lenses or vice versa from the Sigma lineup and with different cameras. So they are different. This is for a Canon. I said that enough times? It's for a Canon. So first thing is you can go through and check your focus setting. Now again, I've gone through and I've zeroed out everything here. Um, I've written down in my drawer here all my settings. So I have all the settings that, uh, that was on here and I'll go back and put them in later, but I don't want any of the settings here. For a couple of reasons. First of all, I don't want to screw it up and adjust something and think I didn't adjust it. The other thing is my settings mean nothing to you. Your lens and your camera combination will have different settings here. These are not universal settings that you can just grab from a friend and plug into yours. You have to test your lens. So how do you test your lens? Well, if you look up above, you should see something pop up and you'll see a video I did up there that you can click on that shows you how to download this focus test chart and take pictures using your camera and your lens to see if your lens is in focus. Pretty straightforward. Now, it'll even show you what you need to do. So on this lens here, the the Sigma 150 to 600, and again, this will be different for different lens ranges. You want to take pictures at 150, 250, 400, and 600 millimeter range. You also want to do them at 9.2 feet or 2.8 meters, 20 feet or 6 meters. This one's weird, just short of 50 feet and 15 meters, that's the weird one, and at infinity on all these different ranges. So you 
take it, you take a picture, you adjust, you move, you take a picture, so on and so forth. Yes, it's a lot of work. Believe me, it's a lot of work. Once you do that, if you have two computers, this works really good if you have two computers. If not, you can just flip back and forth. You wanna go in and you wanna say at the 150 millimeter range, at 2.8 meters or 9.2 feet, where was the focus? Well, the focus was a little bit too far away from me, so I wanna move it back. So you will go in here, whoops, let me try clicking on the right button, and you will move it back. The amount you move it back deter is determined by how far out it is. As far as I know, there is no correlation to one point on here is X number of inches or feet. I've not found it. I've checked, I've tried, it just, it doesn't seem to be there. I've had people say that there is, it doesn't seem to work. So you go through and you do all of your adjustments. And again, I'm just randomly going through here and just hitting a whole pile of numbers so it looks like I've done something. There you go. Once it's done, and I'm not going to do this, but once it's done, you hit rewriting. And that will send this information from the program to your lens. Your lens is now rewritten. So it will now use these focus changes when you take pictures. Then you put down your camera, you go, you shoot them all over again, all the settings and everything. You look at them, you adjust again, you rewrite again. You keep doing that until everything is in focus. Keep hitting rewriting each time and then away you go. Now, two things. First of all, even though you're doing this, even though you spent a half a day or a day doing it, it means a Zippo. Go out and take real world pictures and you may notice it looks different. For me, this lens, 99% of my photography on this lens is at infinity. And 99% of the work I do is at 600 meters. So this area down here, infinity at 600 millimeters is what I do 99% of my work with this lens. It's just, that, that's what I use it for. That's, that's, that's the setting I find I do most work on. If I've gone through and I have fixed everything so that it looks perfect, if I have gone through and made sure that everything is absolutely spot on in studio, and then I go out and take a picture of an eagle and it's focused away from it, or it's focused this way, then I come back in and I adjust this number. And I will make sure that this number suits what I'm actually getting out in the field. Because tests in the studio, tests in your backyard mean nothing. It's the product that you're getting. Now, what happens if you screw up? What happens if you get to this point and you went, oh, oh what do I do? Oh no, I did something wrong. You can hit reset to default and it will reset everything to default. And then if you had written something, it'll say rewrite this. You click on the rewrite and it will then rewrite the default information back to your lens and you can start over. I strongly recommend if you're gonna spend an entire day doing this, that you go in and you write every time you make a change in every single one of these boxes so that you don't screw up big time. And believe me, it only takes one phone call or it only takes one beep on the computer and you go, oh, what's this? Oh, oh, did I do that? To mess things up. So keep notes. If you do screw up, hit return to default or reset to default. Once it's done, once you've rewritten it, you can hit the return button and you go back. Now, what other customization things that can you do? Full-time manual focus setting. And now, remember I just said before that I've reset everything to default. I honestly have never used this before. So I've always had it set to full-time manual focus off. Uh, I just, I've never used it. I have manual override on the lens so I can do little tweaks, but I've never used this. So for me, I would set this to full-time manual focus off, hit rewriting and have it rewrite. Now, again, because I don't really care, I want it set to uh, default. I'm not going to change it because I'm going to go back in and adjust this lens after I'm all done, put all my old settings back in. But I would change that myself. Now, the next one, autofocus function button, button setting. This camera make or lens make does not allow me to set this. Don't know if it's for a Nikon or a Sony, don't know if it's maybe for a different lens, 
but it doesn't allow me to set it on this lens camera combination. The next one, customization mode. Now you're going to see here it says not customized. I have not, again, customized anything on this because I reset it to factory default. So have I said this enough times now? Because I know people are going to be going, what settings do you use? And I don't want to show you because it's different for you than for me. So if I wanted to set my custom function one, and that's these buttons on here. So there's off, custom function one, and custom function two. If I wanted to set specific custom functions for this, I would click on that and then I would adjust from there. Now, what can you adjust? First thing, autofocus speed. So how fast does it autofocus? If you want it to go really fast, so it goes and really focuses as fast as this thing can, you would click on fast autofocus priority. If you want it left at standard, you'd leave it on standard. If you want it set at smooth, you would go to smooth. Now smooth is more for doing video. It doesn't go jerky, it's just a nice smooth focus. <laughs> Again, it's on standard, that's the default. I'm not gonna say what I use. Focus limiter setting. This is something cool. Remember I said earlier that most of the work I do with this lens, I do at infinity. So I can adjust so that this lens will only focus at infinity. Now I wouldn't go just right straight to infinity because there's going to be sometimes it's going to be a little bit closer. So let's say a hundred feet, 30 meters to infinity. I can then set this so under custom setting one, this lens will only try focusing from a hundred feet to infinity. I could go to right to infinity. I could take my custom two to maybe I do something else that's down this way. I could move it down there if I wanted to on my custom setting two. I could adjust this so that it is where I want the range of the lens to be at most times and it'll save it doing the zzz, 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 trying to zoom in and zoom out. Yes, you do have an adjustment on the side of the lens that you can do something similar. This allows you to do more. Again, I'm not going to set it because I don't want you to be setting what I would use. And then I'm going to go back here. Now the next one, optical stabilizing. There's an issue when you use this lens, this big lens, and that if you're out focusing on something and you're doing your focusing and you go to take a picture just before you, or just when you push the button, you're going to see everything go jumping just a little bit in here. What that is, is it's the optical stabilizing system doing its last adjustment before it takes the picture. Well, you can go in and you can adjust this. So you can go to dynamic view mode. So this doesn't do the jumping. Now, how bad is the jumping? It's not bad. It's like millimeters, maybe a foot if you're zoomed way out, but it's not really bad. But you can do this if you want to get rid of that jumping effect. You can leave it on standard. That's where I leave it. And then you can go to modern. And this, this removes the camera shake and it removes that little jumpiness. Again, I've not found anything. And I didn't want to say this, but this is where I leave it. I leave it on standard. I've not adjusted this. I've not noticed it. I know it jumps a little bit. It's not a big deal. Yeah. So then once you do all this, then it would ask you if you want to rewrite. Now, because I've done no adjustments, this is grayed out because I'm not going to adjust anything. It's just grayed out. Once it's done rewriting, it'll then say you can disconnect your lens. You can then take your lens off. You can then return back to your home screen and you can go to the other settings. What happens if you screw up? Or should I say what happens when you screw up? You hit reset all. It takes everything back to factory specs. You hit yes. It says read through this and make sure blah, blah, blah. It walks you through everything that you have to make sure that you've got. Hit agree. And then it rewrites the firmware from your computer to your lens. Once it's done doing that, this lens is back to factory specs. It then says rewriting firmware is complete. You can disconnect the lens. Now it's safe to disconnect the lens from the computer. Now, that's it. That's all there is. If you screw up, you hit reset all. That's all there is to it. 
it will keep your lenses in this program. So if you have multiple of these lenses, it'll keep it in here. And I actually had multiples for different customers in here. I've removed them all here so that you can only see the one. You can, if you have a 50 millimeter, if you have a 24, 70 millimeter, as long as it uses the dock, it'll store it in this program and it stores all the information. But, and here's a big but, I strongly recommend take a piece of paper, take a pen and write down all your settings just in case, especially if you're going to spend an entire day adjusting this lens and then they upgrade the firmware or the software or you change computers or something and all of a sudden it goes, oops, I don't have that. At least you have it. And then if you do adjust stuff, write it down that you've adjusted it. And then you can go back and see, well, you know what? In January, I did these settings. In February, I did these settings. In March, I did these settings. And you know what? I got more keepers back in January than I did in March. So I'm going to go back to these settings. Just saves your sanity just a little bit. And believe me, I don't have much left. So it always helps to save a little bit of sanity. So that's it. That's how you adjust using the dock on the lens. I hope it's helpful. And if it was helpful, click on the like button down below. Subscribe to my channel. Get out there and take some amazing pictures. And we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye now.